Today on Freedom Hillbilly, we're going to explore some Ford fun and take a deep, deep dive, unlike you've seen on YouTube ever before, for the emergency brake system. So join us for the adventure. So what makes your video so different, Hillbilly? I'm glad you asked. Let me show you. I've already taken it apart for you. But this piece won't come out. And it's frozen. Same with the other side. It's frozen. We're going to have to take these pieces out and get them unfrozen. And that means we got to take the axle out, which means taking the drive shaft off, taking the diff off, replacing the gear oil after that. Don't forget to replace the gear oil. It's all of that. We'll get into detail. But first, let's take a look at tools and materials. So here's everything that you're going to need. Well, not everything, just the key parts. As far as tools go, just need a 12 point, 12 millimeter socket for the drive shaft removal. It's not particularly special, but it is 12 point. Few instances where you will need the 12 points and a big pry bar. And that's it for tools, plus all the other standard ones. This is what the parking brake arrangement looks like on this 97 Ford Explorer. And this is how it's laid out. Uh, this is all hidden behind the hub, bearing, axle thing, whatever. So the big spring on top, little spring on bottom, the star adjuster wheel with the little uh, the screw part pointing to the rear. So I guess I'm looking at the dr driver's side. And then you got these springs, which are just fold over piece of metal that with the pin, which I painted white so you can see it, that holds it in place. Now I've reused the spring hardware and the adjuster knob. You can buy it separately, but the new one, the new pads, just happen to get Ray Bestas, not a plug cheap so when you take the diff off you're going to descale it clean up the clean up the mating surface and my favorite go to paints rust fix rust converter and the Krylon semi flat awaiting paint felt pro gasket and at least two of well these are 32 ounces the two should do it because I've drained about a little less than 64 ounces. And finally, since you got this much into it, some black caliper paint for the calipers if you want. I had to rebuild the seal on this driver's side caliper and I paint it black. Pro tip, don't paint your calipers red. It attracts attention. It says, hey, look, I got brakes on my car. I mean... Derek, you aside, every car has brakes. So why draw attention when you can show off this nice white paint job? Anyway, we're getting away from ourselves. So let's get right into it. We're gonna show you how to take it all apart. And no, we're not. As you can see, it's done. The rotor's off, the caliper's off, and all the bits are off for the parking brake. The problem we encountered is right here with this piece. Now, this cable actuates the parking brake. Take it off. So the problem with what we have here is that these two wafer pieces are like scissors, chip, chip, supposed to move and they don't. It's frozen up and the other side's similar. It's just frozen in place. And you can't get this out. There's not enough room. The actual axle is in the way, which means the axle has to be pulled out a little, which means, yes, take the diff up part. So you can get in there, take the pin that holds it all together out, and take the little C-clips so you can pull the axle. And after you do that, you're going to have to replace the gear oil. So here's a tip. When you take the diff cover off and expose all the gears, you'll want to count the teeth of the crown gear. And if you're really enthusiastic, 
get in behind and try and count the teeth of the pinion as well and then you'll know your ratio now for fords they got a little metal tag that tells you exactly what it is gms not so much it's probably the only thing ford's done right anyway i digress now let's take a look at the drive shaft mark its alignment it's a balanced assembly that's what my yellow paint marks are for take the four 12 point bolts out to do that you're gonna need some leverage get along extendo ratcheting half inch yeah leverage and then finally a pry bar to connect the two there's a little boss which is a circular ring shelf that holds that drive shaft up. Let's see if we can't get it done while I'm right here. Not working. How do we do this? It ain't coming. Oh, there it goes. Knocked the camera right out of my hand. Wow, that was exciting. I told you it would be an adventure, but you see that little shelf around the nut there? That's what's holding it up. Boy, I think I scraped my I think I scraped my finger. Boy, I think I scraped my finger on that. This is why you wear safety gloves. All right, let's keep going. So I'm going to take you along for the ride. If you haven't seen the hundred other YouTube videos, we want to get this little, you want to get that nut, it's an eight millimeter and it has Loctite on it. So it's going to give a fight so we could pull out this pin. And then the next step after that is inside there. I know you can't see it cause I can't see it. All right. So stuff a rag in so it catches the pinion gear because this is going to need some oh, bending force with both hands. There we go. Like I said, got Loctite on there. And you'll want to put some Loctite back on it. I don't know if you want to use the red or the blue. Full strength red is permanent and blue is a little less. But now we got this guy out. I mean, it's a small bolt. So when you go on, don't think that you got to tighten it all up. It's the Loctite that's keeping it so snug. And one nice thing about doing this job is you got your nose right in there with that gear oil. And oh boy, it'll stick with you. Give you a lasting memory. Okay, that's out. And take the rag out. And see if we can get this pin. Here it comes. And just remember that the bolt where that, this part is where the bolt goes in. We'll clean that up later. Hey guys, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's dirty, but that's the C-clip that we need in order to get at it. Go from the outside, push the wheel hub in a little. There we go. It's exposed. And oh, lots and lots of rust falling from this. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Little magnet. There we go. That's one. Let's get the other one. Well, let's turn it a bit so we can, well, maybe not. Let's just see if we can rotate this guy around. Maybe we can't. Okay. Yeah, not happening. There it is. And we're out. Now we're going to be able to pull those axles and get at the prize. Because remember, this isn't about redoing a, a differential. It really isn't. It's a parking brake that you never use. 
Oh, finally. Back to sitting on an uneven ground. All right, let's pull this piece out. If you really want, you should put a towel there, rag there. Ooh, there's a rubber boot. But this guy doesn't really want to come off. There we go. Now I got to clean that up because it didn't have a rag on it. <laughs> Boom! There it is. The axle is getting full of rust. We don't want that. We don't want to pull it out. There we go. Now, we want to, you can see this piece. It's on a little hinge. That hinge is frozen up. We're going to mark this one. Not that this matters, but I want to just keep it together. This was the drinker side. So we're going to put a P. <coughs> That's one. Now here we're on the captain's side. Let's not pull this whole thing out. Let's go ahead and put that rag there. And let's go ahead and pull that out. put that back and there's our prize for the captain's side all right Here are the cleaned up parts, and as I was wire wheeling away, I noticed that there was some, if you look closely, there's an L stamped onto this. Where is it? I uh, can't see it. On the other side, oh, there's the L. I think I took the R that's stamped on this away with the grinder. And on this piece, there's an L. Uh, but this is the passenger. I kept my markings. This is the passenger side. This is the driver side, which is, you know, oh, I guess that is the left side. So there's there's an L on that side, and there's an R on the back side. So when you want it the right side, you put it there. This one has an R stamped on it on the back. Uh, get a close up view of that R. But this one, curiously, oh, there is an L. There's an L on that one and an R on that one. Even though this says driver's side. Um, don't know what, what's going on with that. So I'm going to go ahead and drill out these holes to get the rust off of that and that. Then I'm going to do the rust treatment, coat of paint, let it dry. And then we're all set with that. And boom! Just like that, it's done. Nice and shiny. Well, after a couple days rain, dead batteries, and lost footage, it's all done. Fortunately for you, we have a second side. Unfortunately for me, I have to do the second side. But we'll show you how to get it done, and how to get it done right. This is the driver's side, just for orientation. And first thing we want to do before we start putting it together is notice that there are these little snubs, little, little raised indents on the dust shield. And those are to hold off these brake shoes. And what you want to do is take some of this ceramic extreme brake parts lubricant. Lubricant. All right, just put some, you know, right on that and right on that. If you don't see those nubs, just go ahead and smear it all over the place. The more, the better. <laughs> okay, seriously though, you don't need the extreme. You just need some. Okay, now again, 
these brake pads uh, have two distinct halves. The one with the little square bracket indent and the one without with this little point. The little point goes on top, slides nice and smooth into there and the other side the same way. So what we're going to do is first put the big spring on it and get that into position like so and with that in position we can put the the little pins and those springs so i'm going to show you how to do that we're going to start with the easier side first and that's this side the left side on the driver's side where the pin can easily well, here's the pin can easily go through that hole in the back of the dust cap now we reach with the other hand hold it in place and then try and get this piece which is the little folded over spring and get it to get it up there sometimes you need a little screwdriver or a big screwdriver there we go just like that and we could push this guy back in position it's riding on that lubed up little boss now we're going to try and get the pin and and the way i do that someone showed me this on youtube just take a little fuel line or whatever hose then fish it in the hole that's back there somewhere here it goes and that'll help hold it and then take the other guy which I painted white so you could see it and the paint hasn't completely dried it's getting all over my my hand try and hold that little oops that little pin in place now I'm gonna try and just poke my finger or some somehow hold it in place again until we get this spring uh, damn it is just not wanting to cooperate okay that fell down get the pinky back there ooh almost okay I'm almost getting it Ah, didn't quite make it. There we go. Sometimes you just gotta get lucky. Now, again, get this in position. There's the, and we're gonna wipe all this down with brake clean once we get it set up. So, two springs in. Now we can go to the bottom and put the star adjuster, which, again, the, star part the screw part faces the rear and put the smaller spring on so take the little star adjuster get that guy into position there we go oops the back isn't in position exactly there that is now little spring and hook it into that hole well actually we'll do it the other way around because I can't see the other hole there it is and now yeah, we're gonna use that use whatever means necessary to get that and that's Mr. Vice grip here uh, almost darn hmm maybe a little screwdriver will work better Get in position. Come on. Come on. Yep. Try a little. 
doesn't want to go in. The other choice we have is a brake tool that can kind of hold the spring. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Almost. Why is this one giving me so much trouble? Because I'm working around the camera, that's why. There we go. Now everything is in place. We got we got the half spring, the little leaf spring with the post locked. We got yeah the big spring. These two in the slots. In the back here, we have the big spring hooked on the ear. Have the other spring and we have the adjuster knob so all that's needed is get the disc and then uh, do the adjustment on the, on the little wheel so let's do that now put this guy on why isn't it not sure there we go Whew. That's pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and adjust the, the star wheel. And well, we wanna make this go out a little, so. To make it go out on this side, you flip the star wheel up. So it spreads the pads a little more. Now let's, let's do one, two little adjustments. Let's actuate the actual parking brake lever. Yeah. No, not good enough. So we're gonna give it a few more, a few more upticks. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten clicks. See how that does. Uh, let's actuate the brake. Brake actuated. Okay. <laughs> what we might be discovering here is a failure to actually actuate from the actual cable. It could be that this second cable isn't pulling. I can't tell if this is pulling it back or not. if I put a mark on it. Parking brake actuated. Take a peek behind here. Doesn't look like it moved. Now, it's, this cable isn't being moved. So the cable isn't actually pulling the lever. There we go. I just keep it there. Well, there you have it. That was a wrestling job in of itself. I'm thinking this cable here is not actuating. You can see in the back, this is supposed to pull this little ear forward and it doesn't. I'll go and press the brake, see if that gets pulled. Foot pushed all the way down on the pedal. And it doesn't look like it moved. So, we're going to have to troubleshoot this. As you can see back there, this, this cable goes back to that little thingy over there. And it might need 
this cable might be rusted in the t in the race the tube the plating, whatever you call it but it isn't moving you be typically what happens are these are braided lines and they rust inside so the cable gets rusted inside that's it for the deep dive the rest of the project just clean the rotors put the caliper on put the brake pads in and and then go for a ride but this is a project car there's a lot more to do and now added to that list is that parking brake cable not actuating the actual parking brake which we'll have to figure it out and I may do a video on that and if I do it'll be posted somewhere and you should watch it tell Billy out okay so I've had an overwhelming number of you ask to see me install the brake calipers nope not even one but we'll do it anyway first thing you do when you get your new brake pads check them out make sure they're the right ones and when you figure out that they are this won't go into the this will not go in there easily you're gonna have to manhandle it press these little clips bend them a little bit so they'll be persuaded to go into that piston cup all right so here we go will this fit that fits good the other side is that little nub right there on the other side too that little nub fits in little indents on the caliper here and here so when you're putting it in when you're wrestling it in make sure it gets seated completely if you don't it's not going to line up with it's not going to clear the rotor there we go that's in and there we go now it clears the rotor before we put it on the rotor we got to get the brake clean and clean off the rotor and whenever you're doing that you never know where the EPA is hanging around the corner, so get a little bucket and put it under there. All right, there we go. We just emptied the oil out of that on the ground. And anyway, oh, we're rolling? Okay, so what you want to do is clean off the rotor with some brake clean and catch it in a pan because we don't want that getting into our groundwater. Okay, that side, this side that side good job oh the other thing we have to do we almost forgot is get the brake shoes done too because when we're handling it we got the oils from my hand all over it so let's clean that up clean that up clean that up the other thing you may have noticed that we got these little metal clips still on here from prior. I painted them black, so it'll just be easier to replace them. Um, it'll just be easier to replace them. They give you new ones. So let's just clean off that and that. go Tanya's little sister there we go we could put the brake caliper back on This should just slide right on, and it will, after we put some of our Ceramic Extreme Purple Power. Just put it on the little ears here, a little bit of 
slide grease and the little ears here a little bit of slide grease if you want I suppose you could put a bit of here and here here just don't want to check touch the rotor with it okay it's on there so you want to pull the slide pin back so you could slip it over where it's held captive then pound this guy in then you take your little your bolts one goes up on top and one goes in the bottom There we go. That one's going in. It's a 10 millimeter. So we're gonna. Just remember, snug, don't give it all the torques. And that's that. And that's that. Simple, simple. Chicken dinner. Now, join me next time.